Biomaker CA is an ongoing project where we aim to discover how to accomplish growing and unbounded complexity in artificial life. We do that by focusing on something simpler than the diverse ecosystem observable on Earth, but complex enough to be useful for learning important principles of life and complexification. In Biomaker CA, the main citizens of a biome are plants composed of self-organizing cells called cellular automata. In the previous video, I gave an overview of Biomaker CA and some of what is possible with the initial barebone configurations. If you haven't seen it yet, it would be best if you checked it out first. In this video, I will answer in detail this simple question. How does Biomaker CA work? What are all these materials doing? What are the laws of physics of these environments? What can be changed or added? How do agent cells co-organize into plants and survive in this environment? And how do they evolve? If you're interested, let's drop in. In Biomaker CA, the state of the environment can be seen as a big three-dimensional grid. The first two dimensions represent the space where each different cell lives in. The third dimension contains cell-specific information, such as what is the cell type, some internal states such as how many nutrients they possess, and if the cell is an agent, what is its identifier? The latter is used to fetch the DNA of the specific agent from an external database. Every organism will have a specific agent ID and therefore shared DNA. But as we will see, when reproduction is triggered, a new DNA will be created for the new organism. Regardless of the cell type, each cell can only perceive their direct 3x3 neighborhood, but they can generally read their entire states, that is, type, ID, nutrient levels, and much more. Now, let's look at the original materials of Biomaker CA. First, there is void. It is the white cells in the simulation. It does nothing, and it is usually the result of cells being destroyed. Void is intangible, which means that materials such as Earth can fall through it. Next is air. Air spreads through void, and it is intangible as well. Moreover, Air contains air nutrients. These nutrients are diffused among air and sun materials, reflected in the gradation of color that you see. However, the nutrients are solely generated by sun materials, the yellow stripe at the top of the video. Nothing stops the sun to be there, however, and different placements of sun cells would result in different behaviors. Earth is a solid material, subject to gravity. Moreover, it implements a falling sand operation that results in it falling sideways and generating heaps. Just like with air, Earth contains and diffuses Earth nutrients. Here as well, Earth nutrients are generated by immovable materials, the black cells at the bottom of the video. Immovable materials are solid, but don't respect gravity, so they can be placed wherever. They also generate structural integrity, which we will explain later. Finally, there is an extra material called out of bounds. Do you see it? Of course you don't. Here, let me show you. It represents cells that are outside of the world. They should never be visualized, hence the fiery red color. The use cases is solely so that cells at the edge of the world will perceive this out-of-bounds material as the default value. While these are the initial materials, excluding agents, many more can be implemented. For instance, here is a sneak peek at adding lava and fire. In this variant, lava eventually decays, creating dynamic landscapes. Now, let's talk about agent types. First, an organism's life starts from a seed, a vertical pair of unspecialized cells. Unspecialized cells can't do much. They cannot extract any nutrient from the environment, but they dissipate less nutrients at any step. So, the first thing that they typically do is to specialize into another agent type. In this case, the two pages specialize into a leaf because it realized that the majority of its neighbors are air cells. Likewise, the model agent specialized into a root, because the majority of its neighbors are earth cells. Leaf and root cells can harvest nutrients from air and earth respectively, resulting in the changing of colors in the respective neighborhoods to reflect that. 
Every agent cell, regardless of type, can spawn a new cell if they have enough nutrients. When they do, they create a new unspecialized cell. Moreover, every agent cell, regardless of type, can and should pass nutrients to neighboring agents. Generally speaking, air nutrients are passed downwards and their nutrients are passed upwards. Finally, flower cells are responsible for reproduction. At a great cost, they can generate a new seed in the neighborhood. Whenever this happens, the flower is destroyed and the new seed will contain a different DNA from its parent. Now that we are familiar with cells' behaviors, let's look at the environment logic. First, some materials, like agents and earth, are subject to gravity. If there is nothing below them, they fall. Now, this would be quite a problem for branching plants, since any sideways branch would fall to gravity. We solve this by adding what I call structural integrity. Essentially, structural materials such as agents will not fall if their structural integrity is not zero. Structural integrity is generated by immovable materials and gets propagated with some decay dependent on the material. So, the left branch would not fall and the right branch would. Some cell types age at every step. For instance, all agent cells age. The age of an agent is the same for the entire organism. That is, spawning a new cell generates a cell with the same age as its parents. Aging has no effect until a cell reaches its half lifetime. Then, they will start to dissipate a linearly increasing percentage of nutrients at each step, eventually dissipating 100% of them and shooting its death. So, how does life escape death? Through reproduction, of course. Spawning a new seed is the only way to reset the age counter. But of course, then that will be a new, different organism. Other materials can also age and have different behaviors based on that. We have already seen that lava, and actually fire too, can be implemented with aging to control their decay. Finally, let me explain how agents process energy in the form of nutrients. All agent actions consume nutrients, be it specialized, spawn, or reproduce. Moreover, at every step, they dissipate a fixed amount of nutrients. What happens if they don't have enough nutrients? Well, they die. What they leave behind depends on what nutrients they have left inside of them. If they have still air nutrients left, they become air. If they have earth nutrients left, they become earth. And if they dissipate both nutrients, they become void. Most of what I described has effects that can vary based on some parameters that we can tweak. For instance, what is the maximum age of agent cells? Or how many nutrients can agents and materials hold? How quickly do agents harvest nutrients? And most importantly, how many nutrients do agents dissipate at each step and every time they perform any actions? These parameters, and more, are stored in an nth config. We can consider them as the laws of physics of the environment. Together with a specific environment, we create what we call a configuration. This is why some configurations may look the same, but are actually different. They have different laws of physics, aka they have different nth configs. Agent cells can do a lot, but how do they know what to do at any given time? First, we need to define an architecture that all agents will use. This is usually implemented with neural networks, but anything that can be written in JAX is valid. See that as some sort of laws of chemistry of the environment. Every agent shares the same laws, but they may use them differently. The difference comes from having a different DNA, which we can also call genotype or parameters. A DNA is simply a list of real numbers. In my initial experiments, I handcrafted an initial DNA in a way that the initial agents had a chance at survival. This DNA can be used in two different architectures, one small and one very big, and ensure that the initial behavior is exactly the same regardless of the architecture. But to survive for a long time, they need to mutate and adapt. This brings us to the concept of mutators. Whenever we want to mutate some DNA in the environment, so every time that a new seed is generated by a flower, we need to define what is the procedure for doing so. A mutator does just that. It is a random process that generates variation for a new DNA. 
For now, I implemented two types of mutators. One is basic. Each parameter, that is each individual value on a DNA, has a certain chance, usually 20%, of being mutated. If so, we sample the new parameter in a neighborhood of the original with a Gaussian distribution of fixed width. Then, I implemented an adaptive mutator. It works the same way as the basic one. With a certain chance, we sample a new parameter from its neighborhood. However, the width of the Gaussian itself is controlled by an extra parameter in the cell's DNA, and it too can be changed. This allows for some parameters to be very stable and others to vary a lot. Now, even on the same configuration, with the exact same initial behavior, having a different architecture or a different mutator can drastically change the long-term behavior of the biome. For instance, here we are using the same basic mutator, but the top uses a simple architecture, and the bottom uses a complex one. And here we use the same complex architecture, but the top uses a basic mutator, and the bottom uses an adaptive one. With this, I hope you have a clearer understanding of what is going on in these biomes, and perhaps some of these features sparked your interest. Almost everything can be changed, and there are endless possibilities for extending this framework. In the description, you can find links to articles with more details on how everything is implemented. And if anything is unclear, please let me know. In future videos, we will explore some of what is possible with Biomaker CA, including experiments and extensions. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Until next time!